it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. You see top 10 videos regarding fun events. So here we go. Welcome. It's your host Amy from Pendenture and I hope I didn't scare anyone with my voice because I'm a terrible singer, don't get me wrong. And just like I said, everywhere you look, you see top 10 videos regarding fun events these days. Although last year we didn't have any videos regarding my top favorite fun events, this year we will have and I would like to start first with the inks that I use and I will show you my top 10 inks. I will share a few informations regarding each one of them, then I will tell you why it sits at that certain place in that top 10 range. I will show you some close-ups with some ink swaps. Remember, each color can be seen or the camera picks it up in a certain way, so what you get it may be different from what you have at home if you have this specific ink in your home and you try it on the paper. I just used my color ring uh, paper for the swabs and I don't know, let's give it a try. So we will start with the number 10 on the list which is Waterman Absolute Brown. Although it's been known to be called Havana Brown. This is one of my favorite brown inks in my collection because it's very safe and you can use it in all sorts of font pens. It's very very well behaving. It's easy to clean. It's a very dense and saturated brown. You can see on the paper it goes down quite quite well. It's very very dense. Regarding the number 10 on a top 10 list is because I don't use brown inks as often. So this is my choice and when I'm looking for a brown ink this is where I reach out the most. So number 10 on the list is Waterman Absolute Brown also known as Havana Brown. Let's go to the number 9 on the list and this is a very very exotic ink. So we have J. Herban Emerald de Chevour. This is one of the most exotic inks that you can find on the market at this time. You pretty much seen some of videos on YouTube regarding this amazing color. It's a very very nice green ink that has a lot of sheen and also sparkles or shimmer. And this is a swab of that ink. You probably can spot out how crazy is that sheen and sparkle. It's just astonishing. This is an ink that sits at number 9 on my list because I don't use it in fond bands. So each time I'm going to use this ink I'm using my good old trusty glass deep pen and using this I write thank you notes or greeting cards and this is an ink that I'll probably use at one point in a fond pen which is cheap and affordable. Probably that fond pen will be used only for this ink. In regards of washing ability it will be much more safer if it's used in something cheap because sometimes those sparkles, those shimmer pigments will deposit at the bottom of the glass. This is how the bottom of the bottle looks like and just to show you you need to stir up the ink in order to put that shimmer in the color and this is how it looks once you give it a shake or two and so that shimmering pigments can deposit in between the feed and the nib and can cause ink flow problems. Number eight on the list is Mont Blanc Leo Tolstoy. This is a very very interesting blue ink. I nailed this bottle of ink from Stefano at Stilografica Corsani. I don't know if you can find it anymore but I think you can and some shops have it in stock. And this is the ink swab of this blue ink. It is a very interesting blue ink. You will see that my top 10 list include a lot of blue inks or blue variation of uh, 
different shades of blue inks. And a few words regarding this ink, it is a slightly drier ink. So if you have, for example, a very wet nib, and most of my nibs are adjusted to be very wet, so they do perform really well with this ink. I have the bottle for about to one year, one and a half years, but I didn't want it to open it unless for a very special occasion. So when I bought a new fountain pen, I can't remember which one of them because I buy a lot of them. I tried to see how this ink will behave and I was very, very quick to move it up into my list. At number seven, we have Quasar by Colorverse. Colorverse is a fairly new ink brand on the market. I believe they do have two years since they are on the market and their inks are quite, quite nice. They do come in a box as a set with a small bottle of ink, very similar with this one. It looks like this on the paper. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous ink, very, very viscous and thick and wet. It has a lot, a lot of sheen. The sheen is a gold color. I don't use it in expensive fountain pens. I don't use it in demonstrators because it's not that easy to clean. Let's move to number six on the list, Visconti Blue. This is an ink that I used a lot of it. I believe this is the second bottle. If you want a Visconti Blue ink, you can find them available on the Pen Venture website. Of course, down below, I will leave you the link for them, for the inks that you will find on this list. This is a glass bottle of Visconti ink because now they are coming in plastic bottles, very similar in shape with this one. It's a very rich, very saturated blue ink. It has a pop, it's very vivid, it has a lot of shading, and overall the ink is very well behaving, although it's quite saturated. And now we're going to enter in my top five list, and we are going to start with number five, which is KVZ Grapefruit. And this is the only red ink in my list. I don't use red inks as often because I think they come with a stigma. Red as an ink color for fond pens is obtained by using iron oxide as a pigment, which is technically rust. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I understand from uh, having uh, seen a lot of description for inks. This is how KVZ grapefruit looks on the paper. It's basically a very, very saturated red ink. There is no shading, there is no sheening, there is no sparkles, it's pure red. A very orange red, very deep. I simply adore the KVZ inks because they are so nice, they are well behaved. I tried this ink in a number of font pens, although I haven't tried it in demonstrators, in the ones that I did, pistons, cartridge converters, it cleaned up quite well, despite being a red ink. And this is why it sits at number five. Moving at number four on the list, and this is where I don't want to be, have a biased opinion, but at number four, you will find Diamine Desert Rose, which is my exclusive ink with Diamine. And it's a purple ink, because I love purple as a color. It is a purple ink with a lot of sheen. It has a green gold sheen. Despite being a sheening ink, it cleans up much more better than other sheen inks that I tried. It sits at number four on the list because I don't put it in demonstrator pens and I'm going to use this ink only with one pen and that is Momento Zero Grande Desert Rose because it has the same name and the purple ebonite of the fondant pen. It's very, very well matched with this ink. And now let's see what are my top three favorite inks. First of all, I would like to say that these are the inks that I reach out 
the most in regards of getting to ink up a fond pen quickly and write something. And these inks are in my top three because they are easy to clean, very well behaving, nice colors, they are practical, they have bottles which offer the possibility of inking quite big nibs for fond pens because let's face it, some of the ink bottles are not going to allow pens with big nibs to be used and to draw ink from those bottles. At number three, we have Hiroshizuku Tsuki Yo. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous blue ink. It is a combination between a dark blue and a dark green. And this is a ink swab. This is how it looks on the paper. It's a very, very well behaving ink, like all of the Hiroshizuku inks, but this is what I use the most. As you can see, the design of the bottle allows very huge nibs to be filled from this bottle with the swooping bottle end. I use it a lot. It is well behaving. I've put it in demonstrator pans, in expensive pans. It's a very wet ink. It's a very forgiving ink. For example, if you have a nib that is prone to skip or something like this, if it still does skip with Hiroshizuku ink, that means it's a serious problem. At number two, we have an ink that was recently recently added to my ink selection and that is KVZ Blue Black. Gorgeous ink, very very saturated. It had that vanilla smell of all KVZ inks and this is a swab as you can see. It's a very very well saturated ink. It's wet, it's well behaving. I've put this ink in demonstrator pens like my Opera Master Crystal and it cleaned up very well without leaving a single trace of it. If I remember correctly, it sat in the Opera Master Crystal for two or three weeks. So I consider it to be a very safe ink and the color is something that I like a lot. And now for number one, my favorite ink on the list. And let's see, we have Waterman. Serenity Blue. And this is my all-time favorite ink. This ink was acquired when I started in this hobby. It's a very cheap, reliable blue ink. It's very washable. This is a swab just to see how it looks. It has a little bit of sheen if you put down a lot of ink. It's shading. It's one of the most safest inks that you can use into a pan. I've used this ink into demonstrator pans, in very expensive fountain pans, in fountain pans that use a sac as a filling mechanism. For example, in my ASC Bologna Extra fountain pans, I often use Waterman inks, and this is one of the inks that I use the most. As you can see, the bottle is almost, almost completely empty. Well, this is my top 10 favorite fountain pen inks. I've explained why certain inks are at a certain number in that top 10 list. Maybe some of them are not in your collection. Maybe some are. You have different opinions on them. This is based on only my experience alone. Let me know in the comment section down below which you think is your favorite ink from this list. If you have any questions regarding inks or fun pens, leave them in the comment section down below. Of course, we will have to make a top 10 fondant pen list for myself. And it's like choosing between my kids. So it's going to be very, very hard to make that list. Of course, I enjoy doing content like this because I enjoy being very, very spontaneous and I think it's fun. And trust me, one of the hardest things to get on the video on this channel is ink videos like this one, because you will have to make swabs, get the lightning correctly, show the color, try to bring it as close as possible to reality. And for me, 
it takes a lot of time. Well, I think this is it. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or maybe two. And of course, if you want to be updated with everything regarding PenVenture, subscribe to the channel by clicking here and turn the notification bell on. If you want to see more quality content from myself and PenVenture, click on this video and enjoy. Well, my name is Amy and I look forward to seeing you next video. Stay safe. Bye-bye.